I'm the flyest motherfucker at the kickback. Not a competition, little boy with a wrist that Need me in the bathroom. I don't want to sit chat. See, not a boyfriend. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Kickback Podcast. I'm here by myself. I'm in my studio. No longer in my bedroom because my bedroom gets a little hot. That's not really the excuse to why I'm not in my bedroom. I'm just... I'm really embracing this whole living part of me, I guess I would say. And it's it's pretty cool. You know, I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. It's exciting. I'm actually looking forward to doing these things, no matter how hard it may seem to be doing it or, or to go and do it. Um, but yeah, I'm back in my studio because I want to feel comfortable just podcasting by myself in the actual place where I'm supposed to be podcasting. In real reality, like, I have my studio. Might as well put it to use, am I right? It might feel a little weird because I'm here talking. In, like, this is in the living room. My, my, my studio is in the living room now, so there's definitely going to be people passing by in the future. Right now, there's nobody home, which helps a lot. But, yeah, I should be more comfortable with podcasting here in my actual studio, in the place that is meant for podcasting. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I have two cameras set up. I have my microphone here. I burped. I have my, I have my bubbly here with me. These are okay. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the bubblies. Um, not the best. They have this like little aftertaste to them that I don't like, but hey, they're cool. They're chill. Um, yeah, it is currently October 26th. Oh, it's not even morning anymore. It's 2.11. Let's talk about today's morning. I've been vlogging all day long. Uh, I've been enjoying it. I use, I have to go back to my roots. As I said in these past podcasts, I have to go back to my roots. This is exactly where I need to be. And I feel like I've been uh, afraid of myself in a way. Or afraid of of letting myself come out. From my shell, I don't know exactly how to put it into words yet, but I'm getting to that. Um, I've been writing it down, which is pretty weird because I like I've written it down so many times, or I've written about it all the time, like at least once every single day. And now that I'm coming here to speak it in front of the cameras, I, I or not even speak it to the front of the cameras, but just speak it out loud and say these things out loud, which is in all reality, we should be able to do so. Or at least try to get into the habit of saying things out loud, of projecting and manifesting the things that you want to be doing in your life. Um, And that's exactly what I've been doing. I've been trying to remind myself that there's really nothing to be afraid about. And it's been very, very helpful. Um, Now, of course, this could be just obvious advice that somebody could give you. And it feels a little weird when you're saying it to yourself, especially in the situation that I guess I'm in. I don't want to put myself in that like, oh, this is me. No, it's like, um, I don't know. We just all have doubt within ourselves. You know, I talk that, about that a lot. It's how much we end up doubting ourselves. And why do we do that? I don't know. I feel like my perspective had changed a lot. And I would say that back then, like growing up and, you know, becoming me, I was very confident in whatever I had to say. If there was some some cameras in front of me, I wouldn't lower down. I wouldn't act a more reserved way. Or even with people. I, I'm telling you, people would tell me to shut up because I talk too much. And, like, I don't know. I never saw anything wrong with that. So afterwards, it and it wasn't it wasn't me who changed it. It was just, like, as time went by everything changed it's like you're getting ready for a moment right let's say like this um you're getting ready for a moment where you get to fully express yourself and get to realize what you're capable of doing you know all those all those years that you spent mastering your talents or learning your skills or finding the things that you love to do you know, you're passionate about it. You do it all the time. That's all you think about. You become almost obsessed with whatever you're doing. The time comes afterwards, after you finish your growing up stage, I guess I would say school, like you finish school 
and you start putting those things into practice. Except I didn't. I got into a state of comfort, of distraction. Comfort's a good word. I would say comfort. I got very, very comfortable in doing nothing. And I don't know, like ex- coming out of high school, I was very motivated. I had my my vision towards becoming a film director at that time. I wouldn't mind doing it now, but I know that that's not exactly what I'm aiming towards. I love movies. I love film. I love working with cameras or recording something no matter what kind of video it is or kind of film it is, I love doing it. It's it's just one of those artistic things that I have in my arsenal that I love to use and do. For example, I just did a music video for my friend Foreign Baby, and it was for a song called Demon Out. You know, he hit me up and he was like, oh, I have a music video that I want to do and I was hoping that you could film it. When I saw that text, my mind was on a different level of excited it was nervous there was some nerves in there but i kind of transferred it i i could say now i was i was nervous but and i and i knew that but i i transferred it over into a state of excitement rather than letting the nerves consume me and then me being eaten up by fear you know instead i was more excited grateful um and looking forward to allowing my creative mind to express itself or accept this challenge towards my creativity of can you make a music video? So I was like, man, this is what I've been waiting for. I've been wanting to find or I've been wanting to be given opportunities for me to expand and practice my creativity and everything that I have within me to put it out there, you know, and see exactly what I'm capable of and try to knock down any limitation that I have within myself when it comes towards my creativity, that doubt. So right away, I said, yes, of course, of course, I want to film a music video. Like I've been, I've been waiting for this moment for a a good while now. And now that it's um, approached me, it would be ridiculous of me to say no. You know, and I could have said no. I could have said, nah, I don't really want to. I'm more, I'm busy or something. Or I could have said that, um, I don't know if I'd be able to do it. You know, just limiting myself inside my mind. But I was like, no, this is a perfect opportunity for practice. I'm going to gain some money off of it. Maybe not like as much as I would want to charge. But, it, you know, I get some money off of this. I get practice. I get experience. And I don't know. I feel like like my mind gets put to use and it thanks me for it afterwards. I finished the music video and I think it came out great for like the things that we recorded and then the amount of time that I spent doing it. I think it came out pretty good, you know, and as for my first time coming back to making a music video, it's not like I've made like thousands of music videos before in the past. No, this is my third music video that I've done. Third? Fourth. It's my fourth music video that I've done. And the last one I did was months ago, maybe even a year ago. It's been a very, very long time that I've been able to step out of my comfort zone and put my all into something that I really like to do. And that's create and mess around with cameras. So I was super blessed for this opportunity. That was, it was, it was great. I loved it. And I can't wait to make another music video for either foreign baby or a different artist. If you want a music video, and you're willing to just have fun with it and not be a, I don't know, bro. I've worked with some people before in the past that end up being a little too much. Or it's like, bro, all right, listen, <laughs> that can't happen. Like, I, I can't make, be the one to make that happen. And you know it too. So don't get mad when I say no, you know? Maybe it is that part of me that was still being a little bit more limited. But I'm being reasonable. I'm making you something that's really, really good already. And you're asking for something that isn't realistic, um, poss- realistically possible, whether it be in the amount of time that you're giving me to do it, in the amount of money you're giving me to do it, in the way you're treating me you know, or something, you know, if you're treating me like a bitch, like I- I'm not going to allow myself to get treated like a bitch. No, I don't want to do this anymore. 
go find someone else to make your music video. You know, it's it's about I see art as a collaboration, you know, and I've read it many of times and I've seen it in many videos that collaboration is the whole premise behind creating an artistic um media or something, you know, something something artistically um attractive to the eye. Something that people will enjoy. It's about a collaboration, whether it be um, collaboration of different ideas within your own mind, collaboration of different minds of artists coming together. It's true. Sometimes you'll get a great idea from somebody who doesn't even do the same type of art. They just blurt it out, and you're like, "Whoa, that that that's good. That's good one right there." You write it down, you put it in action, and boom, you have something great. But yeah, just that practice giving me the ability to practice me creating art i get that it's your video i get that it's your video too and i want you to have a great video but not like this you know i have my boundaries i have my my uh i wouldn't say rules i don't know if rules is the right word but just things that i i like to stay with i like to stick with if you have an idea dude shoot it to to me and i'll get to it but don't trample on my creative process either. So I was excited for this too because it wasn't any of that. It was more of, all right, bro, let's have fun together. You do your part as the artist and have fun in front of the camera. And I'll do my part as the cinematographer, the videographer with the camera recording you and making sure that we both do our best to make this video the best. We just have different roles, you know? Um, and it all worked out. I loved how the video turned out. I'm excited for any new video to come out. And I've been creating my own videos a lot more often too. Um, I just finished recording two UFC videos that I want to be publishing on my YouTube account for MMA or UFC as a whole. Um, my last video on that account got like 2,000 views. And I was surprised by that. I'm like, wow, like that really, that did good. Like that's surprising. I never get 2,000 views on a video that's, I think it was like 11 or 12 minutes long. So I want to see the retention. I haven't seen the retention of it, but for it to get 2000 views, like that was, that was exciting for me. I saw that there is a possibility of me growing in that channel, but I just need to be really, really consistent with it. And that's the part that a lot of us don't, um, stay with, you know, we try to be consistent and then something happens where we get, um, sidetracked. And especially now when you're constantly dis distracted with like literally everything. I was watching the Kanye West documentary again yesterday with my dad and I was listening to his mentality and there's something about it that I want. And it's that mentality of fully believing in yourself to the absolute max and whatever anybody else thinks who cares? You know, this guy was out here. Like, it just, I don't see people. Maybe there is some people. But this guy was going out to record labels, studios, offices, and putting his CD in every single speaker that he could find so he can play his song and get that reaction from the people there. And just to see, like, how, how they vibe with it, what they think of it. I guess now, like, our... In order for us to show people, we have to upload it, right? So their reaction, like getting the the reaction of thousands of people all at once versus one reaction and then one reaction and then one reaction before you let your art your art into the world. I think it, it there's like a difference in that. I don't exactly know how to explain it all the way, but he really just goes for it. And I think that that's what I want to do. I want to be able to just go for it and not really hesitate or doubt anymore or live in fear of myself. If I have to come off a little bit more confident or arrogant in some ways, then so be it. But I really do have to start believing that I will have the best podcast in the world. If I want to get to that level of podcasting, if I want to get to that level of creating being an artist i have to fully indulge and fully embrace that i am that person that i belong in that space 
that I may be doing some things that are different or weird to the normal eye, to the normal average person. But that's why I'm not an average person. And that's okay. Listening to Kanye think, just like I'm talking, he was just sitting in the car and somebody was recording him. And the mentality that he has is somebody who is obsessed with achieving their goals. And I have a lot of goals in front of me that I haven't been really pointing out or focusing completely on. So it's it's that time where you do really have to go all in and believe that you are doing the right thing in going all in. Because time goes by, you live in a limited mindset, you think that you can't do a lot of things, when in all reality, you can do them, you just never put yourself in that situation or in that environment or in that challenge yourself to go and do them. For example, just a small challenge today, all right? Or not today, but this week. My dad has been needing my car to go to work because one of like the axle parts of his car isn't doing so good and it's making like the tires not, the, it's not making the car drive correctly. So he's like, mijo, let me order the parts and once I fix that, I'll give you your car back, but I need to go to work. So I was like, all right, sure. But I still needed to go and drop off my siblings at school because my dad needs to go to work, right? So I dropped off my siblings on a lift I dropped them off and then I walked home. The second day that I did that, I only had to drop off my little brother because my sister dropped off my little sister. And um, after I dropped off my little brother, I ran home. I ran slash jogged slash walked um, all together. Took turns, you know, I just little sprints. I just, the point is I challenged myself from needing a car and not knowing that I can walk it all the way home it's like, no, you can walk all the way home. You're overthinking it before you even do it. You're hesitating and you're comfortable. The only reason you don't do the things that you really want to do is because you're comfortable in doing nothing. And that's exactly where I was at in that time where the time came that I was saying, the time came where I needed to show my abilities and really express what I have to offer the world. Instead of doing that, I became comfortable in being comfortable. And that's one of the worst things that I think that you as a motivated and ambitious person can do is be comfortable in being comfortable. Um, and I'm not going to lie, just this past three days, and I'm trying my very, very best to stay on this wavelength. I've been pushing myself a little bit more to do things that in all reality I would be uncomfortable in doing because I was just out of that habit. But just acknowledging or being okay with being me to like the fullest of my potential and not really caring about um, how I'm going to come off to other people, whether it be in a public setting, whether it be with my friends. Just fully going in on me living my life and not having those limitations. Um, you know, like right now, I don't have a car. But I knew that if I needed to go somewhere, if I absolutely needed to go somewhere, I'm talking like it was some job opportunity or or um, I needed to, I don't know, show up for something. That my mind would be put in a state of, all right, there's a problem in front of me. I need to find a solution to this shit or else that problem's just gonna take over. You know, I'm not gonna be able to fix it or I'm not gonna be able to take, not even a problem. If an opportunity arises and I really need that opportunity, I'm gonna do my very fucking best to get the opportunity um, in my grasp. You know, be able to achieve that goal that was set there for me that I just needed to go and get. So it's the same thing, but instead of getting those opportunities from some other people, it's like I'm bringing those opportunities to myself. If I, if someone told me, I'm going to give you the opportunity to train, to become healthy, and unlock this next level to yourself that you never thought you had within you, I would say, okay, 
yes, I want to train. I want to become stronger. I want to achieve that new level, that new potential that I never knew I had within me. It's sad that I've allowed myself to rely on somebody else to present me with that opportunity rather than me going into the garage and using the garage every single day to train and become better. And that's what I've been doing. Is it easy? Dude, no, it is not. And I'm taking it easy. Like, I'm pushing myself, but not to the point that I know some other people would push me. I'm just coming out of that comfortable state where, I don't know, I just walk around thinking about what can I do next rather than just doing what I'm already doing or waiting for life to come to me rather than allowing life to come from me. That quote has stayed in my mind for the longest and it's so real. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's because I I'm, I don't want to say like, oh, I'm, I'm just built different or some shit, but I kind of am. <laughs> I don't know if some people just have a different mentality when it comes down to achieving their goals or exactly what the definition of their goals are compared to mine. But I have this one thing that I'm seeing of me as a person, of the person that I want to become. And I know that it's only me that's stopping me from becoming me to the best that me can become. So that's what I'm 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 doing more often. You know, um I don't want to be that nervous person anymore. Cause I'm really not. I, you know, I, I'm I'm really um what's the word that I'm looking for? Expression it? Expression it? Is that the word I'm looking for? I exclaim. I project, you know, I, there's just like this level of, I don't know if cockiness is the word, if arrogance is the word, but it, it really is belief in yourself. I'm starting to believe in myself to the max that I can. And I could take the easy way out of just going by life day by day, trying to figure out what I'm going to do, or I can just get up and do it even if I don't feel like doing it. It's super hard. L living your life the way you want to do it is super hard because no one else is going to tell you how to live your life the way you want to except for you. So if you begin not to listen to yourself and just allow yourself to be controlled, I guess, by the forces of your own mind, the thoughts that come into your mind that make your body follow, it's like, Oh, I don't want to go train. I don't want to go do exercise and get all tired and sweaty. Like you're, that's what your mind's telling you. And it's, it's super normal for your mind to tell you those things. Nobody wants to go into the gym and train and get all tired because it's hard work, but it's that hard work that you have to show up for. You do it, you finish, you come out and you're ready for the day. These past three days, I woke up, I went on a walk slash run slash jog. I came home today. I woke up. I did jump rope. I went into the garage and I trained. I had breakfast. I recorded my video. I've been really embracing that content creator slash YouTuber slash documentarist slash artist within myself to the max that I can. And I've been feeling great about it. Um, I did a journal prompt today. One of the like the dark no what's the thing the shadow prompt shadow work shadow work prompt and that was one of the questions that i got today and it was like what are some of the things that you judge yourself on uh and i thought to myself like what do i judge myself on and i judge myself a lot so i started thinking why do i judge myself a lot i judge myself a lot because i've always judged myself not in the way where i'm like picking at myself where I'm putting myself down to a lower standard, it was more of the opposite. It's that I always held myself up to a higher standard because I knew that if I wanted to be at that higher standard, I need to perform at the higher standard and vice versa. So if I perform at the higher standard, I'm going to be at the higher standard. Um, and that's what I lived most of my life on on trying my very, very best so I can try and become at least close to the very, very best that I can, whether it be in school, whether it be in my training in jiu-jitsu, whether it be in my drawing, 
in singing, in anything that I really set my mind to, I always had that mentality of, I, I don't know about being harsh, but just pushing myself the most that I can. And I guess after that limbo period that I've been on of doubt and not doing anything and not pushing myself up to the higher standard, it's like my body entered a state of shock of like, man, what are we doing here? All right. You know that there's things that you need to be doing, but you're not going towards them. So why is that? And it was just that confusion. But I'm, I'm glad that I'm coming out of that confusion and that um, I'm really diving into what it means to be me. And it's, it's exciting. It really is exciting. It's, that's why I'm talking about it for 25 minutes straight. But yeah, that's what I've been on. And I hope I'm 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 excited to see what is to come from everything that I'm going to do. Um, I wasn't looking forward to it because I knew that it was a lot of work. But this is the hard work that I want to be doing. Um, so I'm excited. I really am excited to see what the future holds. You know, going into this 22nd year, I wasn't. But I'm very excited right now. Uh, I know it's going to be hard. But it's it's something that I really want to do. It's what I want to do. It's what I'm going to do. I know that I'm destined to, to be one of the best people in the world. Whether it be in the world of, of just the ones around me or the entirety of the world. But I know that I wasn't... I wasn't destined to do the average. I was destined to do beyond average. And even if it doesn't make sense to a lot of people, or even if thousands of people begin to doubt me in a way, or like just start thinking of me as some like crazy, arrogant dude, like that's kind of the mentality that you have to be on. You need to be obsessed with yourself. And I'm obsessed you know, I'm obsessed with this whole idea of life and I want to make sure that I'm living it to my fullest as much as I can when it comes to doing the things that I love. If I'm doing podcasting, I want to really be on here, you know, not try to podcast, but do a fucking podcast, you know, con confianza, con confianza, con fan, fuck, I can't say the word, confianza, fuck, you heard that? That was terrible. <laughs> I could not say that word at all with confidence, you know, say, say what you need to say with confidence and don't worry about any of the other outcomes. I, I, I don't know. I'm motivated, you know, and it's not motive. It's not, I don't even know if motivation is the right word because motivation comes and goes, but I'm determined, you know, and having this mindset isn't for everyone. And I learned that throughout these past few months that if I can't hang with this mindset and I can't fully believe in it to the 100% that I'm not, I'm not made for it. But I know now, especially from watching that Kanye documentary, at least the first part of it, I only got to the first part. I'm going to be watching the rest of it again. But um, yeah, thinking in that mindset of nothing can fucking stop me that I'm on go mode. You know, I, I see where I want to go and I'm going to do whatever I can, whatever power I have within me to get to it, no matter what time of day it is, no matter what limitations are set in front of me, no matter what challenges approach, like this is where we want to go. This is what we're going to do. That is the mentality that we have to be on. And that's what I'm sticking to. Kanye West, man. A lot of people think that that was crazy, but... I don't know. There's there's a lot of genius behind him, especially in his younger years. Of course, now that he's getting older, like he's giving less of a fuck about what he says. And it, it's always been that way. It's just that now he's spitting onto like topics that in this modern day society, we can't really be talking about. But he's he's never been afraid to push the boundaries, to push those limitations that either he sets on himself or that people try to set on him. Donda... Thank you so much for raising Kanye West the way you did, for giving him that mentality, because I think we are, there's a lot to learn from this artist, from this level of genius that resides within Kanye West. 
So um, that's the mentality that I'm going to be on, you know? Uh, no more doubt within myself. No more insecurity. No more fear. That's, that's a big one right there. Fear. If you can control people with fear and you manage to do so successfully for a very long time, you're in control of everything around you. And right now, I feel like they've instilled a lot of fear within us as people in a various amounts of ways. Like, one thing that I, that I said earlier that I don't think it was in this podcast, but I know I had said it like earlier this week, is that the reason that people aren't sticking together or or um, coming together again here in the United States is because we're afraid of ourselves, you know? And they're putting us at war with other people, with other countries, with other places in the world when in reality, we have to end the war that has been within ourselves this entire time. And I'm not saying this in a, in a political sense at all. I'm saying this like in a me- almost a metaphorical, artistic sense. You know, we have this problem that we've been living through this entire time where we've been comfortable in living in these problems that have been set upon us this entire time. Right now, I would say one of the problems that we have that limits, or at least me, it limits me a lot is money. And because of the fact that I don't have that much money, I stop myself from doing things that I want to do because of that aspect of money. It's like, even even to go out, you know, like I don't have money for, for gas or I don't have money to be spending on food. I'm not gaining any money from anywhere right now, so I can't be doing these things. And you become almost like a slave to your mind. But again, going back to the Kanye documentary, this man thought that he was on top of the world when he really wasn't. He had nothing. Just to act in that way. That aura that you dispense from yourself towards others. That they, you walk into a room and they see it. That man is walking with confidence. That man is on something that a lot of us do not understand. But I need to be at that level. That's the thing that we all should strive for. Just trying to become the best version of ourselves that we can. And being okay with believing that we are becoming the best version of ourselves. You know? Um, And when I see the people around us in our in our society or the way everything's been playing out it's like we're afraid of ourselves you know we're we're we limit ourselves so much to the point that we don't do for ourselves anymore and i'm not saying like in a selfish standpoint where you're only doing for yourself it's like i think in order for you to do something very very big with other people together as a whole you need to be able to do things for yourself as well and be confident within the things that you're doing right so if we all live in fear within ourselves in what we are thinking if in what we are saying we're fear that we're in fear that with whatever we say people aren't going to like it and then they're not going to like you and we live in fear with getting people mad because they're afraid of themselves. You know, it's like, it, it's this whole thing of us being driven by fear. And because of that, we haven't been able to progress the correct, quote unquote, the correct way that would be a lot better for everyone. Me becoming unafraid and really being faithful to myself and to the ones around me and believing to the to the max that I'm in control and that with God on my side, I'm able to do some amazing things that I never knew that I was capable of doing. The more you believe that, the more you become that. And the more the, be- the more you become that, the more it becomes a reality. You just have to keep pushing it. You know, it's going to be fucking hard. 
but just keep telling yourself and as crazy as as you may seem to other people as arrogant as you may seem to other people they're not on the same route as you are um they're not going to understand exactly how you're thinking those goals are there and and that 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 destination that you want to get to is there you just got to get towards it and the only way to get towards it is through hard work and that's what i've been learning you know and the the route that i'm going on it takes me becoming uncomfortable in being normal i guess you can say so i guess i have to, just, I have to come to terms with that like bro this is what we're doing I know it's it's weird in the eyes of others and it may feel weird to you, but this is part of it. So who cares? This is your job. You, If they told you to perform like this with full confidence at your job or at school or believe, make you believe, like you, they tell you, you have to believe in yourself the most that you can. And if you don't, we don't want you. I, I think that, and the more that it's enforced and I guess there's a punishment, I guess in a way, if you don't do what you want to do or believe in yourself or try your hardest, if there was a consequence for you not trying your hardest, and there is, I feel like a lot of people would be doing more for everyone and within themselves. The punishment in all reality is a punishment that you give yourself. And that's you not unlocking your full potential. Going to the philosophers, the Stoics, I think it was Marcus Aurelius that says that it's a shame to see a man not live and become the highest version of himself and not unlock his full potential. And I think that's so true. No one else is going to tell you how to do that no one else is going to tell you how to become the best and if they do they don't really care because they'll tell you they'll tell you do this and you'll become the best do this hard work hard discipline but all of that is something that you need to do yourself and you could do it alone or you could do it with you know the help of other people but the point is you need to do stuff Things that you actually want to do. I could be spending a lot of my time over at a job, right? And I bring this up a lot because that's one of the biggest dilemmas that I have. Is going against the contrary and not getting a secure payment from a job that really could care less about me. You know? Doing me. doing Being my own boss. And when you're your own boss, you treat, you try to be a little bit more lenient on yourself. But no you have to be very strict to actually get things done and that's what we're that's what we're doing here you know i want to have people coming on this podcast if you're watching this podcast and you've gotten to this moment here dm me on instagram if you want to come on this podcast i'll be more than happy to talk to literally anyone um i i tend to put myself down onto a lower standard when it comes to podcasting just because i don't have that pro that practice in conversating with multiple people or with different people or with people that i never talked to i don't really have practice in talking to different people or to talking to people in general or just having a conversation i don't have like this is probably the most i've spoken uh this entire week to be quite honest with you just back to back going on a 40 minute tangent or just talking for for a very very long time this is probably the most i've spoken this past week verbally vocally you know so even just doing this gets me out of that comfort zone so that way when somebody comes to sit right in front of me man i'm ready for it like i'm ready to have a conversation about anything and let's do that let's let's practice that a little bit right the fuck now i'm gonna look around the room i'm gonna look around the room and i'm gonna have a full tangent about whatever the fuck i look at let me see dragon ball z dragon ball z is one of the best animes in the world i don't give a fuck what you think anime wouldn't be the same if 
Dragon Ball Z didn't put its part into the whole world of anime. I think it inspired so many different people, so many different creators, and it also gave that mentality to the designers of different animes towards their characters that they should have. Like, that whole Saiyan mentality of you can like barely get up and you're like ah, 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 ah. And you're like getting up and you're struggling to get up but you have to defend your world or else the evil person is gonna come in and destroy it and then you're gonna be completely fucked and it's up to you like it really is like that put yourself in that mentality that if you don't perform if you don't keep going your entire world will be destroyed and i know that it, it sounds a little bit exaggerated because it's just you and like the things that you're doing. It's like you, you wake up and you're another day there, you know, no, no big deal. Tomorrow will be different, you know, whatever. But if you really want to see that success within you, you have to push yourself to the max that you can. And in, in Dragon Ball Z, that's what I saw a lot of. My favorite character is Gohan. And it's, even when I was a little kid, people would call me gohan i remember my dad said that he had one of his friends that he would call me gohan well one because i had the little gohan haircut like you know gohan when he's in this little like green uh shirt in like in the first episode of dragon ball z with a little yellow thing and the hat and he has his like little bowl cut and stuff you know little little cool kid that's how i looked like and now that i'm older gohan has always stuck with me as like one of my favorite characters and I always got mad when I saw that they made him super weak. You know, I always thought that we always knew that Gohan was supposed to be one of the strongest, if not the strongest character of Dragon Ball Z. You know, and it was that heart that he had within him, that human side that made him even more powerful. You know, he had that Saiyan side and he had that human side. And I think that that love or that faith that he had within him, that hope that everyone had within him is what made him so powerful and when they made him weak in the show it made me it made me mad and disappointed because i know how much potential this kid has and for him to not fully tap into that potential and that strength that resides within him it was it was sad. It was very... It, I don't know what other word to say besides disappointing and sad. I need to raise my vocabulary big time. I want to learn a lot of words. But that's... I resonate with Gohan at that side. At that... Um, in that aspect. You know? Because growing up, I remember... I, I remember thinking of myself that I would grow up to do some great things in this world. Like... I don't know, just like my the abilities that I was gaining as I was growing. I just got the hang of things so fast. I learned things so fast. I struggled a lot, but I overcame those struggles and ended up surprising myself and the people around me sometimes. I'm, I've done things before in the past, and I'm not saying this to be cocky at all. Like I, I'm saying this because it's true. I've done things in the past where I've left people in amazement, in astonishment, where they couldn't believe that I was doing it, that I was doing something so unimaginable. And I was a kid, you know? After a while, I stopped my training. I stopped my that whole part that I grew up with, just like Gohan, and I... He's got comfortable in studying and becoming a, a father and having little Videl, little uh, Pan with Videl. Uh, and he became average again. Maybe not average to like regular everyday humans. In a way, he did become that average human. But... um yeah, it was like he had a huge he had a huge flare, huge fire, and then he just dimmed down into like some candlelight, you know? 
and that's what I saw myself becoming. Like a very dim light. And just in the same exact way that I was getting mad that they made Gohan weak when I knew he was so powerful, it's the same way that I felt about myself. I, I, I was being mad and frustrated and disappointed in myself that I wasn't living up to my full potential. And I guess that kind of judgment where I was just constantly judging myself in a doubtful manner um, took a toll on the person that I was. But I guess I'm seeing or realizing even more that if I'm not showing up for myself, just the way Gohan had to show up for, I guess, in his uh, an extension of himself being his daughter in that new movie of uh, Dragon Ball Superhero. Um, if I'm not showing up for myself, my world can literally be destroyed and taken away from me. Um, and I can't let that happen. I mean, Gohan almost had to face the reality that his daughter could have been taken away. If they had succeeded, Gohan could have never seen Pan ever again. All, all his hopes and dreams that he had within his beautiful daughter could have been destroyed. Like we, I, I've never thought about the movie in that aspect. But Gohan without Pan, I don't know what that would have done to Gohan. And me, without the determination of achieving my goals, I don't know what I would have done with myself. So I'm glad that I stepped out of that mindset. And that I embraced that there is this potential within me. That there is this level that I'm on and it's okay to be at that level and it's okay to unlock new levels in the future that you never knew you had within you just like Gohan and I'm hoping that the Dragon Ball series makes Gohan you know a constant character that's very very powerful and they use that character wisely to its full potential to his full potential because that's what he's there to do, you know? That's what he's been destined to do. To become what you would say the, the full image of what it means to be, I guess, in a way, a man, you know? That Saiyan mentality and that human mentality, how I said, the mixture of the two is what made Gohan powerful and that's exactly what we or what i need to do you know it's just that i've been in that human side for far too long and it made me weak you know it made me less powerful i need that same mentality that i've always had within me that i forgot that i had within me Man, Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z. One of the best. One of the best right there. I don't know how people don't like Dragon Ball Z. Just leveling up. You know? They don't know the amount of sacrifice that it takes to, to fully be you and unlock those different levels. To level up. They don't know what it means. The hardship that it, it takes to be the best of the best. Like, I look at these UFC fighters. Like, Alexa Grasso, she talked about it, you know? She talked about all of the... If you don't know who Alexa Grasso is, she's the first Mexican female champion of the UFC. And she says that she had to make a lot of sacrifices in order to be there. In order to obtain that level of greatness that she has unlocked that she always knew she was capable of unlocking. I have to know that I'm capable of unlocking literally anything. That's that mindset. That I never knew that I had within me. No. 
I've known that I've had this within me. I've known that this exact form that I'm at is where I need to be. And that there's levels ahead that I'm going to get to that I'm just that it's, it's meant it was written in my book that I'm destined to be at that level, that I'm destined to reach those destinations and accomplish those goals that I've set within me or those challenges that life has thrown at me. If I'm telling you, like it, it's it's a different leveling up process that you have to go through and it all starts with stopping the doubt within yourself. I'm very happy to grow, man. I'm very happy to live. To know that every single day is going to be hard, but I'm not going to lose the day to anybody else but me. And even so, even if I'm the one beating myself, I'd rather be doing that than having somebody else try beating me. You know, I'm in competition with myself and... I'm in competition with the version of myself that wants to be comfortable. I can't let that motherfucker win. It's like, I, you know how they say like you're your own biggest enemy? It really is that. I can't let myself win. I have to constantly be pushing to be better than myself. I know they say like, Maybe it isn't all about evolving. It's about being in that present moment that you are at now. And it's that. It's that I'm fully acknowledging that this is me. That this is what I've been meant to do. And I know that these podcast episodes by myself have been like a little bit, um, I guess in a way a rant-ish. But it's really not. It's more like realizations that I've had within myself that I know a lot of other people are having within themselves. And it excites me because I know that there's people that are in the same exact path that I'm going through. Maybe not path, but the same mental process that I'm going through that I know because I know where I'm going to end up and I'm going to be doing some great things. I'm talking people are going to know about my name, about my podcast, literally everywhere that you look. Have you heard the new Juwan Kickback podcast episode? Shit like that, you know, things that, yes, right now I'm super small, but it's okay for me to believe that in the future I'm going to be at that level because I know that I'm heading these places and I know that there's people that are in that same mental process that are heading towards places that they are fully starting to believe. And once they start getting to those destinations and not letting it, not leaving it for some other people to head there instead, that a lot, there's going to be a lot more people that are going to be heading towards greater destinations. And if we're all headed towards greater destinations without fear, without doubt, and without limitations, this world is going to be on a whole different level. And for the good, I'm talking, we're having technological advancements. We're having advancements between our, within our own society, with us as Americans, and I'm going to emphasize this as as an American, all right? For all you people that are shitting on America, saying that uh, America is no longer the place that it used to be, yes, it's not the same place that it used to be. America has gone down a lot worse, but I know that it's not going to make a huge change if we don't make the change within ourselves and we stop doubting that... And keep saying that America is becoming so bad, that America is one of the worst, that there is no faith in America. The faith in America comes from the Americans. I'm going to be doing this course that I, I, I saw in an ad. I'm going to be making a whole video about this too. I'm very I'm looking forward to this a lot, making the video and taking this course. But while I was scrolling through uh, YouTube and just exploring around, watching different videos, different creators, Casey Neistat, I love you so much, man. You're one of my favorites. I just have to do a quick shout out to Casey Neistat. I watch Casey Neistat's videos all the time. And especially back then when I was in that whole vlogger realm or... um doing my own types of vlogs. Like Casey Neistat was one of those people that I looked up to the most because he was just doing him every fucking day, 365 days. I think he, I don't know how how long he went on doing a daily vlog, but I know that he passed a year. 
a year every single day of showing up to yourself to living your life the best way that you can putting it into a video format and sharing it with the world without a fear of what anybody else is going to think of you and that that i my gratitude for the fact that a guy like Casey Neistat is in this world, I thank God so, so much for allowing him to present me with a master, with a teacher so easily accessible to me when it comes to creating. Strive to be like Casey Neistat in some ways of just doing you and showing up for yourself every single day. That's what I got from Casey Neistat. To be creative, to keep doing, and yeah, not, not taking things too seriously. Man, Casey Neistat, thank you so much for being you. This, epi this episode is dedicated to Casey Neistat. Casey Neistat, if it weren't for you, and I guess Kanye West too, if it weren't for you, Casey Neistat, I wouldn't be this person that I am now. There was definitely a part of you in my life that has allowed me and it has carried over to this point in my life where I'm at now. Casey Neistat, thank you so much for everything. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being born. God, thank you for Casey Neistat. You have blessed my life, honestly. And I'm not saying that as, as a fan. I'm saying it as... I guess a student in a way, not a student on YouTube, a student of life. You've taught so, so much throughout your vlogs. And if you guys don't know who Casey Neistat is, go check him out. I don't know where the fuck you've been. This is one of the best human beings that I've ever seen on the internet. I have, I wish I'm going to meet Casey Neistat one day. I want to have a full conversation with Casey Neistat because I know that there's a lot of genius within his mind. And whether it be just for the pod, whether it be for the podcast or just a regular, like casual encounter with Casey Neistat, if I ever get to meet Casey Neistat in real life, I'm going to make sure that I make the most out of that encounter right there. Casey Neistat, you're fucking awesome. As I was saying, Showing up for himself 365 days of that year was it just an example of you being in control of what you want to do. I don't know what I was talking about before I went into that whole Casey Nice that tangent. But um Yeah, I mean I was I was oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was talking about the um the uh course that I was gonna take. I was scrolling through YouTube, you know, watching some some creators like Casey Neistat and an ad came up by Hillsdale College and it was for a course that they were giving out for free online on their website for American foreign policy and it's going to cover all the things that Americans don't know that they have the rights to do the power to do what they don't have the power to do in other countries um it's going to talk to me about the wars world war 1 world war 2 and where we could be headed and um no i guess our rights like if if the government were to try to put us in a position where um where they're doing something that we don't really want to do and it seems kind of unfair it it kind of it's teaching it's going to be teaching the rights that we have as americans that we should know to protect ourselves and I'm not saying like legis um oh, I don't know about legislation. I don't know if that's the right word. But I'm not saying like against like the cop uh, the cops or anything where it's like, well, what have have I been stopped for? I have rights. I know my rights. I'm saying like independence. <laughs> I don't even know what it's gonna cover, to be quite honest with you. But that's what I'm imagining. You know, in case they put us in a situation worldwide that we know. It's like where we can go against our government in the most beneficial and the most efficient way possible, where it protects us as Americans as a whole, not just us as individuals. I'm talking it protects America as a whole. So I'm excited to look forward. I'm excited and looking forward to that. I saw the ad on YouTube before a YouTube video. I clicked on it. I signed up for the course. So now I'm going to be taking a class or some classes 
about American foreign policy and getting a certificate through the mail once I complete that. I'm going to be making a whole like video about me taking that course and I'm explain to you guys in the future what I've been learning because right now the way the world is turning, we need to be educated. We need to be educated. We need to be faithful within our communities, faithful to ourselves and make the best of America. I don't want people to think that America is the worst place possible. It saddens me as an American. I'm a, I'm Mexican American. My parents are from Mexico and I was born here, but I can proudly say that I am proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. Like just like the song, bro, we're as free as can be, but they've instilled this level or this mentality of I guess in a way, slavery to our own minds, you know, where we, we think that we can't, we can't do it. And it's sad, bro. We're American. We're Mexican. We can do this shit, bro. But we just need to do this together. You know, if somebody isn't in the mentality of, oh, you can do this. I don't know, man. I wish... I wish that we cared for each other a lot more than we do because I know the amount of improvements that we can make together without fear, with faith, with God. How come people don't believe in God all that much anymore? All respect to people who don't believe in God. All respect to all the different viewpoints that people have towards religion, not even religion, towards God, you know? It's saddening. Even saying these things or having that uh, viewpoint religiously, I guess you can say, or just having that faith in God sometimes can be seen as something out of the ordinary or something uh, unearthly now. Something that's not, that you should hush up about. But it's like, no, this is the person who is going to give you the most faith in yourself. He has the most faith within you. He has the most faith in you. You know, I think I haven't been, I haven't dabbled in religion all that much, but I know God loves me and I know God has a lot of things ready for me. And he's just been waiting for me to go and get them. And I know that right now, as I'm saying these things, I feel it. I'm telling you, I, as I'm saying these things, as I'm starting to believe in myself, God is smiling at me right now and saying, you're getting it. Thank you. I'm so happy that you're getting it. Go make some changes within your life and I will grant you whatever you set your mind to. Have me on your side. Have me in your heart. Have me in your mind and I'll help you this entire time. And we're headed towards big things because he's on my side. And it's okay for you to have him on your side too. Like, don't you don't have to claim yourself as Muslim or Christian or, or or Jewish and all that stuff over there that's going on. Have love for yourself. Have love for the people around you. Have love for God. And I know that together we can make this world a better place. As as cliche as cheesy as it sounds, that's that's literally where we could be headed if we really try our best with each other. Fuck, man. I, I, it gets me amped up and accelerated a little bit because I just know the potential that we all have in ourselves and the potential that we have within our country, within the world. And we're not living up to that potential. The same thing that I said with Gohan, the same thing that I had within myself, it's the same thing that I have within everybody in the world. And I know that it's taking us a long time to get to that mentality. I know that it's taking us a long time to fully believe that we are super powerful and that we can make changes to this world, even as small as we are. I'm just a 22 year old kid who has no fucking money, who sits in front of cameras and tries to become a YouTuber as of now. You know, I'm trying to become a YouTuber. I'm, I am a fucking YouTuber. Like, I've always been a YouTuber. 
I was one of the original YouTubers. Maybe not to the greatest extensions of some other people, the biggest careers in the world. But in all reality, since I got my hands on that fucking iPod that I accidentally deleted all the storage and information from when I jailbroke it on my dad's iPod. It was my dad's iPod. I'm sorry, dad. He still brings it up to this day. I, I deleted like <laughs> 6,000 songs off of his iPod because back then you had to like manually go and download the song from like some other source, add the album art, type in the title, and make the whole album for yourself right there and then. But now we just use Spotify. Like, he did all that hard work, and I just wanted to do some crazy things on the iPod. So I jailbroke and I deleted everything. But I was always a YouTuber. I would grab that iPod, and I would make videos and not worry about what anybody else was thinking. And that's what I've always been doing. Juwan, it's nice, it's nice to meet myself. You know, this is who the fuck I've been and who the fuck I am and who the fuck I will become. Whew. Man, it feels good. It feels good to believe in yourself. It feels, it feels better to believe in myself than to doubt myself. So I'm going to continue to believe in myself even if I seem a little weird or cocky or arrogant or extremely confident within myself of me being myself man it feels good it feels really really good to be in this state again like it's gonna be hard i know that i don't know that i'm not gonna be in this mentality this entire time there are gonna be some instances where i start going back to that i can't no puedo mentality but i know that i can snap back to this mentality a lot faster just from literally screwing at myself and saying nope that's not me let's get back to this go that way Ugh, bad vibes ah bad vibes you saw the bad vibes just pass by me oh shit bad vibes just went past me and i i'm still good good to go am i tired yes i i woke up today I went to the garage, I, or I did jump rope, I did training, I ate breakfast, I journaled. I, I'm doing my life the way I want to be doing my life. And now I recorded my two UFC videos and I've been podcasting for an hour and seven minutes. Was it about just me the entire time? Yes, I guess it was. But, I mean, I'm barely meeting myself. I have a feeling that you guys would want to meet who I am too. And... I don't want to give you guys, I don't want you guys to know me as the person who is doubtful, who is inconsistent, who is unmotivated, who doesn't believe in himself. I want you guys to think that I am the best person that you will ever meet, that I have that capability, that you want to be able to meet me in the future. And I promise you, you will want to meet me in the future. I want to be able to have a conversation with literally anybody that steps in front of me. I want to be, I'm going to be looked at as a great person. You know, that they just stand there and you look at them and they're like, wow, I like that dude. I want to be like that dude. As I spill bubbly all over myself. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, be excited for yourself. Be excited to live your life the way you want to live your life. It's okay to be this excited. Dude, I'm like right now, I'm talking very, very loud. Like I, I, if you were in this house, you'd be hearing me from upstairs. I'm talking very, very loud. But this is how excited I am to really embrace who the fuck I've been trying to be or who I've been, who I've been, period. Man. And I'm, I'm excited because I know how much more is to come if I stay in this mentality. And that I come to terms with embracing me. Embrace yourself, man. I promise that in the future, I will have other topics to talk about. Maybe if it were a podcast by myself, like I'll, I would be able to talk about literally anything else besides just me. But this is what I'm on right now. I know that I could be talking about, um, I don't know, some trends going on or a boxing fight or some, and I will, I will in the future, but right now, this is what my mind is on. I know it's, I, 
I, you know what? Just for you guys, I'll talk about what's coming up in the future, uh, a little bit more, or what I've observed that isn't strictly related to me. Just so I can finish off this episode, and you guys can't say that I didn't talk about other shit besides me. <laughs> but th- again, I'm talking about me because that's all I'm thinking about right now. I'm thinking about me. I'm thinking about everything that I'm going to do and everything that I can do, and that's literally everything. I can do literally everything. I don't know why I was thinking that I was in some position. And I I can see why. I can see why. But I don't understand how I allowed myself to be in that position. Now, we're here to take over. We're here to conquer literally anything that comes our way because I'm just that unstoppable. I'm coming into that John Jones mentality. I'm coming into that laws of attraction of the universe manifestation i'm speaking this shit into existence and it sounds a little weird and i know that people are going to think of me oh oh, this guy's just talking out of his ass look if he sounds he sounds arrogant or some bullshit like that listen i'd rather think of this as my i'd rather think of myself as this than anything else and if you have a problem with that stay where you're at i'm going somewhere else Let's go. Let's do this shit. All right. I I don't want to be limited by anything. I want to I want to go. Let's go. I saw the way Kanye Mo- Kanye West was moving when he was trying to find and make it in his career. I can do the same thing. I can go. I can keep going even when I'm tired. That's the mentality that I have to be on. It sounds harsh. It sounds tiring. But I know that this is the tired that I want. This is the tired that I get to be tired about. This is the hard work that I get to accomplish. I'm grateful. I'm fucking blessed. I am the best right now than I have been in the entire life. And tomorrow, I'm going to be the best that I have been since then. And the next day, the same thing. Always striving to do my best. Looking forward to that 1% better every single day, just like my friend Jay Bauer said. Fully embracing that. As cocky and as arrogant as it may sound when you say it out loud, you're saying it in your mind, but you're afraid to say it out loud. Let's change that. I am going to take over this entire podcasting realm. I'm going to be the best version of myself every single day and i'm not going to be worrying about what anybody else thinks about how i go around in this world in the eyes of others this is me we're going to big things and nothing is stopping us i hope that you guys stick around to see what we aim to do or what we get to do because i want to see all of you guys making some big things of yourself too One of the biggest things that excites me is growth. Growth within myself. Growth within an artist. Growth within a society. Growth within a piece of art. I like seeing a growth as a whole. I want to see everyone else growing consistently, constantly. Always growing, always reaching out for something big. That whole mentality that they've been telling us about like, Oh, just settle for less. This is good enough for you, even though it's not what you want to do and what you want to do seems absurd. Don't listen to that. I'm saying go full you mode. If there's a part of yourself that you don't like, kick it out. It's okay to kick it out. If if you're going to embrace and acknowledge the fact that that part that you don't like about yourself is still in you, Go to war with it. It, it, it. That's what. That's the mentality that I've been trying to get on. It's going to war within yourself. Get that that side of yourself that you don't like. Declare war on it. It sounds cheesy. It sounds motivational. But I'm saying this as as sincere as possible. Declare war on the side of yourself that you don't like. And every single time that that person or that side of yourself is saying, "I don't want to do this," and trying to take control over. You yourself take back that control. They're trying to make a move, cancel it, and make and fight back with an even stronger move, even stronger move. 
that's what I'm trying to get to. It's not going to be easy, but we need to do this. I want everybody to be as them as they can improve every single day at whatever they're trying to improve on. I think that motivates me. Seeing other people grow motivates me to grow. And I wanted to get to the point where seeing myself grow motivates me to keep growing. But in order to grow, I need to put in that hard work. And that's what we're getting to. Let's end this episode on talking about some trend that's going on on the internet. Because that's what a lot of people are super um, interested in. So I think I'll go on Instagram and see what comes up. John Fury versus... Wait, what? What is that? Oh, Tyson Fury. So Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou are going to be boxing this Saturday. I didn't even know this this Saturday. I knew that, that fight was going to come up, but I didn't know that it was going to be this Saturday all, all that soon. That's literally in two days. Wow. That's in two days. The best heavyweight boxer versus the best heavyweight UFC fighter or the, the ex-UFC the former UFC heavyweight champion. What do I think that's going to happen? Man, I think that Tyson Fury is going to whoop that ass, to be quite honest with you. I think Francis Ngannou could rely on a very powerful punch to get in and actually hit Tyson Fury in the face. But Tyson Fury is just, he's a boxer, man. Like, to be a boxer in his own realm is going to be so hard. And... I know that they say that Francis Ngannou has some good striking. I don't think so. I think it's very... Like, he has good striking in MMA, I guess, because you're just trying to hit that person. But when it comes to striking and boxing, it's a whole different level. And there's a lot of entrances, a lot of openings that Francis Ngannou has that in, in boxing, you're going to get caught. And I think Tyson Fury is going to catch Francis Ngannou. Um, is it a good media thing is it gonna have a lot of attraction i think it does but at the same time it's one of those like celebrity fights and to be honest with you i'm completely over celebrity fights now after that logan paul versus dylan dennis and ksi versus tommy fury no nah, i'm done i i don't want to watch anymore and then nate nate diaz versus jake paul that fight was terrible. I don't want to watch any of that anymore. If that's what boxing has for me, I don't want to watch boxing. I'm going to I'm probably I don't think I'm going to watch this fight, this boxing match between Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou. I will look at like what happened after the fight maybe, but I'm not very really interested in this fight to be quite honest with you. Is it big names? Yes. Do I know what's going to happen? I think so. If Francis Ngannou shocks the world that could be an outcome but I'm not gonna be as like oh oh my god ah! like it is I don't know I don't know I feel like it's it's like a just publicity you know they want to get some eyes on the sport they want to get some money in the bag the best versus the best this world versus that world but when it comes to the level of boxing I don't think that there's going to be anything that extravagant to geek out over or to like really 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 talk about um, that's going to blow us away. Um, Mike Tyson is training Francis Ngannou, so that could make things interesting, I guess. Mike Tyson, bro, Mike Tyson was fucking crazy in his day. Um, that's one of my little brother. That's my little brother's favorite boxer right there. If you don't know, my little brother, he trains boxing. He loves it right now. He's all into it. Uh, he could be more obsessed with it. Um, but again, he's a kid. There's no one really pushing him anymore because, you know, parents are always super busy. But my little brother, if he was like, if my parents were to like set their minds on, all right, you want to do boxing? Let's make sure that you become the best boxer that you possibly can if you really, really want it. And they train, they started implementing that like parents will figure into my little brother. 
like he would be on a different level. And that's exactly what it takes for a parent to make something great of their kid. It's like they have to dedicate their minds to making sure that their kid is there. But now it's like they work and they're tired from work. You know, both parents, you know, I'm not just saying like one or the other. And I'm not saying my little brother either. I'm saying like a kid in general. So the kid isn't like kids aren't getting that full um uh men what attention from the parents to achieve goals or obtain skills that they really want to obtain so it ends up just being something else that they tried and they didn't actually get to fully do um but i know that my little brother is like really into into boxing and if he just has that support um the way parents are like at least the way I grew up with where parents were like fully invested in their kids, like fully invested. I'm talking like I, that's, that's the vision I have for my kids. You know, like I see if I have my kids, when I have my kids, I'm going to see them as like this, this sculpture almost again, that might be like that artistic side of me, but I want to see them as like this thing that I get to build. And I know that, by putting my attention into making this work of art the best that I can, that they're going to love what they've become, you know, that they're going to become beautiful and they're going to know it. I, I don't know. Children are so fucking beautiful, man. Children have so much potential and it's sad that we're not seeing that potential that they carry anymore. Um, but yeah, boxing, Mike Tyson, one of my brother's favorite my brother's favorite boxer in the entire world was Mike Tyson, is Mike Tyson. He watches clips of him all the time on YouTube. He learns the way he moves. He loves he loves the way Mike Tyson boxes. So for maybe maybe I'll watch the fight with my little brother just because he likes boxing and because um Mike Tyson has been training Francis Ganu. But yeah, Mike Tyson being in that corner or teaching Francis Ganu. It might give him a little bit more of an edge, but I'm still thinking that Tyson Fury will probably take this. I don't know what the fuck is up with Tyson Fury's dad, but, um, yeah, like, I appreciate it. Like, I don't really care. I knew that if, like, if I were in that situation, like, now that I'm thinking about it, if I were in that situation and my dad was with me, he'd probably be in that same, the same boat, you know, just like, like being riled up and ready to fight too or just like you know my my dad was super invested in me uh growing up in me and then when my little sister came he maybe a little bit less on my sister just because like we're boys you know like boys will do things differently than um girls you know and i'm not saying like in the whole men or like boy girl thing i'm saying like we just like I know that I'm going to treat my son a lot differently than how I treat my daughter, you know, my son, like, and that's, that's exactly how it went. Like, I'm going to be wrestling. I'm going to be training. I'm going to be doing jujitsu. I'm going to be developing my art. And the same thing with my sister, but she just had that different mentality that I had than what I had because, you know, same thing, son, daughter, different. And, uh, what was I getting to? Um, but yeah, if my dad was in that same boat, like I'm telling you, he would be super invested in uh, in me. Like if I were at that level of of uh, what's his name, Tyson Fury, you know, heavyweight champion, and my dad was on my side, like that fool, that fool would be right there with me. Not because I asked him to; it's because he would want to be there. Like he he would like he he's that dad you know my dad is that dad where if he gets the chance to dedicate himself the entire time to his children like he's gonna be there he's not gonna be the one that watches the the fight at home no he's gonna want to be there ringside watching you know it, it's just that part of him he he really took into consideration like the the things that we ended up doing and now that like everyone is super busy and that you don't really get that liberty to spend time with your family or always have something that you have to take care of instead and it it, it distracts you a lot you know but yeah i i can see the part where people can ridicule 
um, Tyson Fury's dad. You know, he just came out on stage right now uh, trying to square up with Mike Tyson and with his shirt off, I think. But, yeah, uh, I don't know. That's his dad. You know, he's excited in his own way that we just don't understand. We're fans, but they're family. It's it's very, very different. The connotation of family has changed a lot. And I think the more you look at it in that perspective of family, the more sense it'll make. Am I looking forward to the fight? Not really. Am I going to watch it? I think so. I'll watch it with my little brother. I think I'm going to end the podcast here. We've been podcasting for like an hour and 25 minutes. This has been an epi- this has been a great episode. I enjoyed it. Thank you for listening to me. Um, I'm very excited to keep creating, to keep making more, to keep becoming the best that I can, to keep being the best that I can. And yeah, I hope you guys are staying tuned because there's a lot of things to come. I hope you guys have a great day. If you guys happen to enjoy this podcast episode, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, cop some merch if you want to. Um. Yeah, let's let's keep let's keep being the best. Not just me. I'm saying you too. Keep trying your best. Keep doing your best. There's a lot held within us, and we just have to break those limits and unlock our full potential. And I know that we can. I know that we can. We got this. All right. I believe in me. I believe in you. You believe in you. You believe in me. Believe in everyone. Believe in yourself to the max that you can. All right. I'm out. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thank you for listening. I will see you guys all in the next podcast episode. This has been Kicking Back with Joan episode... Five? Five. I think it's five. Other than that, I'll see you guys all next time. Have a good one. See ya. Peace.